Good morning, Ambassador. How are you? Good morning. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Good morning. It's a pleasure, Ambassador. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you. Good morning, Ambassador. So good to see you too. Nice background, Ambassador. Yeah. <laughs> How's the life? Good? Good, good. So far, so good. So far, so good. Are you at the office, Ambassador, or at the residence? Um, we have a shift. Um, some days at the office, some days uh, at, the, at, the, at the home. Um, uh, but for many, many weeks, around six weeks, I was uh, at, the off, uh, at my house. Uh, oh. Now we are moving in a shift. I heard that you are still you are not going to Kemblo, no? Physically. Uh... Yeah, a bit, a bit. Uh, well, we are implementing uh, a strict health protocol, Ambassador. Yeah. But we have some some meeting rooms in which we can mm -hmm. observe uh, strictly the health protocol. Also, so if there is any urgent things that you need to discuss with us face to face, uh, we are open to have yeah. that. But of course, you know, one or two persons, not more than that. Yeah. Um, but but I heard that two things that you have some sort of um, source of um, um, uh, COVID in Kemblo. I, we heard that three or four colleagues at Kemblo were you know um, um, got it uh, positive uh, COVID nineteen uh, contagious. And the other thing it doesn't that, work properly, yeah, huh? Yeah, and yesterday. Uh, we heard that um, you will have some sort of um, agricultural agricultural seminar uh, next week and will be uh, with the presence of all the ambassadors interested. And so it will be maybe the first activity. We heard that that uh, yesterday from the Argentinian ambassador we were together in a seminar. Yes, I, I think so. Some 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 colleagues are already preparing that. But of yeah. course, again, we are uh, implementing the strict health protocol. Good. Thank you, ma'am. Hola querido, ¿cómo? Buen día, ¿cómo les va? Bien, muy bien. ¿Qué tal, Gustavo? Buenos días. Hola, Polito, ¿cómo vas, querido? ¿Cómo vas? Bien, bien. El, el sonido no anda muy bien, no se escucha muy bien con esto. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál sonido? ¿El tuyo? ¿Qué decís, Julio? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Qué tal, Gustavo? No sé si el tuyo o el tuyo. ¿Te refieres a mi voz? No, Perú? A, a vos te escucho perfecto, a Gustavo ¿Aló? lo escucho con eco. ¿Aló, aló, aló? No, no ahora bien. Yeah. Es que tomaste mucho anoche. No, no, si sos vos que parece que te estás haciendo gárgaras, escúchame. <risa> <risa> no, yo encima me tuve que levantar a las 5 de la mañana Juan, para un seminario con Chile. Qué bueno, lo tuyo es este... <risa> es una obsesión, Juan. Es casi religioso. <risa> sí, sí. Sí. Qué espanto lo del Líbano, ¿eh? Oh, sí. Horroroso. Y la cancillería. Por sí. el amor de Dios, qué, qué locura. Sí, son 10 kilómetros el impacto, ojo, es harto. La, nosotros recibimos información de que nuestra gente, lo que una embajada ya está bien. Pero, pero el susto es gigante. ¿no? La, la nuestra también porque estaba haciendo home office, porque la embajada quedó hecha bolita. Ah, o sea, se cayeron todos los hilos rasos, todo, porque está relativa, está dentro de la zona de, 
de alcance de la, de la explosión, así que rompió todo lo, lo que es el interior, el exterior, pero gracias a Dios estaban haciendo home office, así que no le pasó nada a nadie. Pero absolutamente. No, pero, pero yo creo que 73 muertos por ahora, o 75. Sí. Son, son números y no, sí. Exacto. Y 2.500 muer, eh, 2.500 heridos al momento, con lo cual el número se puede elevar a la N. Qué bárbaro. A very good morning to ambassadors and all our participants. We will begin our program in two minutes. Uh, we will begin at 9.05 sharp. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Selamat pagi, Pak Jen. Pagi, Pak. Dir. Pak Dir. Ya. Budubes. Pagi. Pagi Pak Dir. Selamat malam Budubes. Waduh, begadang lagi Budubes gara-gara kami nih. <laughs> Apa kabarnya? Alhamdulillah baik Ibu. Pak Halo. Presiden de Julio. Oh, and Basar Marine Stella. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Congratulations. We are also having a seminar there in Peru, no? Yeah. There are a lot of um, news about your cabinet. <laughs> yes, I just I just saw this morning. Unfortunately, we, we didn't get good news in that sense. Mm. Yeah. I hope the new minister is still exists. Hmm? Especially I hope so. I, I, yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, because the best, um, minister of Retno just sent the congratulation. <laughs> For the new um, yes, I, I, I know. So <laughs> let's see what is going on the next uh, few days. Mm -hmm. okay. so, Ambassador Excellency, uh, shall we begin our webinar? Good. Uh, before we start with our program, uh, let me, uh, in, in, in order to avoid any unnecessary noise, uh, let me kindly request to all of you to mute your microphones, please. Thank you very much. Uh, excellencies, honorable speakers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning and good evening to those who are in Latin America. Uh, to our ambassadors, Bapak dan Ibu Duta Besar, mohon maaf kita uh, agak kesulitan mencarikan waktu yang lebih tepat dan karena perbedaan uh, zona waktu juga lah yang akhirnya membuat Bapak dan Ibu terpaksa beristirahat agak lebih telat dari biasanya. Uh, Excellencies, uh, let me first of all welcome all of you and appreciate, of course, uh, we appreciate very much the uh, presence and participation of Indonesian ambassadors to the Pacific Alliance member countries. And also, uh, we see uh, happily the participation of uh, ambassadors from the Pacific Alliance member countries in Jakarta. It, it very, always very nice to see you all, and also all our participants who are already with us now. Uh, we have uh, more than 100 uh, participants uh, already registered, but so far, around 77 in the 70s are, are joining us uh, up until now and uh, hope very soon uh, they will join us. 
um, the aim of this webinar is to discuss potential cooperation and the, the digital economy sector between Indonesia and the four members of Pacific Alliance. And also, of course, to encourage uh, deep thinking uh, about the importance of e-commerce uh, in the development of our small and medium enterprises in both uh, our regions. Uh, excellencies, uh, honorable speakers and uh, particip uh, participants, uh, we have brought together uh, prominent actors in the digital economy to share ideas and, of course, key aspects uh, of this dynamic domain. We have uh, the president of uh, His Excellency, Mr. Gustavo Ayares, the ambassador of the Republic of Chile to Indonesia, uh, Bapak Muhammad Nil El Himam, the director for application and digital economy governance of the Ministry of Tourism and Creative and Economy of Indonesia, we have also Ibu Kurnia Sofia Roshada, Vice President of Marketplace Bukalapak, and Bapak Rofi Udarojat, Manager for Public Policy and Government Relations of the Indonesian E-Commerce Association. Uh, let me remind all the participants that speakers' presentations uh, will be available for all of us after, after you fill the online attendance list. The link for the attendance list is in the chat box. You can just click uh, the link. Besides, uh, we know, of course, uh, because of the very interesting topic, lots of you have already prepared your question and some had indeed sent the questions to us, uh, but please keep it and hold it for a while. Uh, we will have a uh, an allocated time for question and answer after the, our, all our speakers uh, uh, speak. To begin with, uh, it is my great honor and privilege to invite Bapak Duta Besar Ngurah Swajaya, Director General for American European Affairs, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Indonesia to Singapore to deliver his uh, keynote speech. Pak Dirjen, you have the floor, Pak. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. Excellencies, Ambassador of Peru to Jakarta, Ambassador of Chile, uh, our colleague, Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia in the Pacific Alliance member countries, honorable speakers, His Excellency Mr. Gustavo Ayares, uh, Ambassador of the uh, Republic of Chile to Indonesia and Jakarta, uh, Mr. Neil L. Himam, Director for Application and Digital Economy Governance, Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy of Indonesia, Ms. Kurnia Sofia Rosiada, Vice President Marketplace Bukalapak, Mr. Rofi Udarojat, Manager of Public Policy and Government Relations, Indonesian E-Commerce Associations, distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all and also a very good evening to our colleagues in Latin America, uh, Ibu Estela in uh, Peru, and also other colleagues who are joining uh, us uh, in the evening in, 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 in their local times. So uh, in fact, time differences should not be a constraint for us when we have this digital, uh, when we have this technology to link us together. Distances is also should not be the problem for all of us. Let me begin by extending a warm welcome to you all to the Indonesia Pacific Alliance Connecting to Regions Through Digital Economy webinar. Your presence here attests to your complement, commitment, I should say, to continually strengthen collaboration between the two regions in order to grow and prosper together. Indonesia has a strong relationship collectively with the Pacific Alliance as well as also a strong relationship bilaterally with its member state. In the trade sector, Indonesia's total trade with the Pacific Alliance in 2019 amounted to 1.72 billion US dollars. And the Pacific Alliance member states comprise of Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru. Collectively, it is the eighth largest economy with a total GDP of more than 4 trillion US dollars. And this is also 38% of the Latin America's GDP. 
So I think this is uh, really a very strong economy that we will be able to collaborate together bilaterally with Indonesia. The main mission of the Pacific Alliance is of course, to promote trade and investment with Asia and the Pacific countries and digital economy should be the way forward to develop closer and deeper business interactions between the two regions. Indonesia's digital economy itself, it has a potential and this is expected to grow fourfold by 2025 at the value of approximately 240 billion US dollars thanks to the continuing infrastructure development, expansion of the Palaparing telecommunication infrastructure, which is covering the whole Indonesia's archipelago. It is currently having five tech unicorns, including also the one that is participating as the panelist in our discussion today. And the Indonesian digital economy is the largest in Southeast Asia. And we also serve to connect the Pacific Alliance to the greater region in the Southeast Asia. So this is not only about Indonesia's 260, 270 million market, but also we are talking about 600 million ASEAN market. And hopefully if the regional comprehensive economic partnership is to be signed, the agreement at the end of this year, then we are talking about the, lar the largest uh, free trade agreement uh, in the world. Even though the COVID-19 pandemic has become a significant disruption and has affected the world's economic growth, including that of Indonesia. However, I firmly believe that the, in the economic field, particularly in trade and investment, Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance Corporation could continue to grow for the mutual benefits of the two regions through the application, of course, of the technology in their interactions. Excellencies, distinguished participants, colleagues, as a consequence of the pandemic, almost all business sectors in the country have been affected. GDP of most countries plunged into negative territory. International cooperation, global supply chains have also to be reshaped. In its June 2020 economic outlook, the OECD projected a 6% drop in the global GDP and a 7.6% fall in the case of second wave of the pandemic occurring by the end of 2020, with a double digit decline in some of the most affected countries. And it might be followed with modest recovery of around 2.8% in 2020. And I think this is going to be made possible, of course, if the vaccine is available by then. There is nevertheless still many reasons to remain to be optimistic in the middle of this crisis, particularly when we are talking about businesses during as well as post-pandemic COVID-19. COVID-19 is in fact, have accelerated the rise of digital economy. The pandemic has become a reality check for businesses that have been reluctant to embrace the digital transformation. And now they find themselves unprepared and need to expedite to its use in the middle of these difficult situations. Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba once said, e-commerce is the future and going to replace a lot of traditional ways of doing business. And the e-commerce is not for big companies, but also e-commerce is for developing countries, young people, and small businesses. Fast transformation of digital revolution and Industry 4.0 have made it possible for many business sectors to adopt and adapt in their business operations 
in a post-pandemic new normal. It will soon be expanded, hopefully, to cross-border business interactions. In this case, we are talking about Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance countries. As both Indonesia and Pacific Alliance countries have been embarking rapidly into the growing potential of digital economy, as both have also significant trade and investment potentials that are yet to be optimized, the pandemic should be utilized as a crucial momentum to start bridging the two regions, the two countries, in this important undertaking. We should also identify ways and means to develop smart economic partnership and start our endeavor from practical cooperation to help post-pandemic economic recovery efforts. One of the ways and means to diversify economy for countries during the, the post-pandemic COVID-19 is leveraging the broader use of technologies, especially among small and medium enterprises and on business potentials that could bridge more interactions across the Pacific. One of the panelists could certainly, or all of you could certainly share ideas based on your own respective experience. Here we have Bukalapa, which has already been very successful in bridging the SMEs in Indonesia. So I hope that based on the lessons that they learn, they will be able as well to serve as a bridge across borders, in this case, between Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance countries. As SMEs plays a vital role in driving the economies, they will remain as important backbone for national economies, as well as for fulfilling the people's need. Creativity often also emerges emerge from small and medium economies as they are very agile and adaptive to many shocks. And they also often disrupt the inefficient ways of doing business. Thus, it is incumbent upon us to help facilitate and connect those SMEs to develop potential econo economic cooperation by using technologies. According to the WTO report in 2018, SMEs with an online presence are more likely to export and contribute to global supply chains and economic growth. This is partly due to the fact that the internet facilities facilitates information dissemination, remove intermediaries, increases business offer, uh, outreach, and help create global reputation, all of which reduces SME's costs and increases international competitiveness. The COVID-19 pandemic has let consumer potentially increase their online presence for online shopping, social media, internet, search and teleconferencing. Several surveys collected by OECD proved that of the 26% of business owners who have online operation have seen a 30% increase in the sales during April and May this year. Earlier this year, during the Digital Economic Summit 2020, President Joko Widodo stated Indonesia's strong commitment to be the driving force of the digital economy and to be at the forefront in advancing the digital technology. With the most active startup ecosystem in Southeast Asia, in Indonesia, we have also two Apple Academy is supposed to be increased into three, which is going to be located in Nongsa, Batam, which is very close to Singapore. It also has 2,193 startups. I think this is one of the largest startups in the world. 65% of internet penetration in 2019, and this is going to be improved with a Palapa ring, which is covering the whole provinces uh, in Indonesia. And we have up to 171 million internet users. Therefore, Indonesia has enormous potential in digital economy. In the middle of the pandemic COVID as well, Indonesia is trying also to promote, to serve as 
one of the essential global supply chains. As the impact of the trade wars, we have seen a lot of companies are starting relocated out of uh, China and Indonesia is one of the destinations. And I think this could also provide the significant potentials for us to develop our cooperation, especially on the economic field. We can build more sustainable goal, uh, more sustainable global uh, value chains by leveraging Indonesia's market and demographics in order to encourage investment and trade in the strategic sectors through digital economy. Indonesia also shares the same values with the Pacific Alliance digital agenda in regard to the importance of the digital economy, particularly the use of e-commerce by SMEs to promote prosperity and economic growth. If both Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance are able to strengthen and elevate their cooperation within the digital economy field, there will be great benefit to people of both sides, as it would also contribute to the domestic, to the respective domestic economic recovery. I'm very confident that such is a goal can also be delivered and is it is also uh, uh, possible within our reach. Excellencies, distinguished participants and colleagues, let me conclude by thanking all of the speakers who have made the time to contribute to this important webinar. I strongly believe their expertise will provide us with valuable insights. I also wish all of the honorable speakers and distinguished participants a very productive and fruitful meeting. Lastly, I fervently hope that this webinar will serve to increase a better mutual understanding of our respective needs and conditions so that we can fully explore and utilize and decide on ways to move further by strengthening our economic cooperation, especially in the digital economy. I hope our discussion could also result in a concrete initiative, concrete cooperation that we can further develop and finalize during the INALAC Business Forum that we are going to organize in November this year. So with that, I wish you all a fruitful discussion and thank you once again for participating in this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Terima kasih, Pak Dirjen, for giving us that encouraging speech, uh, speech that uh, surely has given us a clear background and also set the tone for the discussions that we are going to have. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished, uh, honorable uh, resource persons, uh, speakers, and participants, without further ado, I would like uh, now to welcome our first speaker, Bapa Neil Ilhimam, Director for Application and Digital Economy Governance of the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. Uh, Pak Neil's uh, Directorate oversees the strengthening process of digital economy governance, talent and application creation, and of course also digital economy in the field of the creative economy. Pak Neil, uh, you have the floor, Pak. Thank you, Pak Director Romasni. Good morning, uh, everyone, uh, uh, excellencies, ambassadors, uh, and distinguished guests. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Neil. I'm the Director for Application and uh, Economic Governance of the Ministry of uh, Tourism and Creative Economy. Uh, today, I would like to present to you the potential of Indonesia's digital economy and how it uh, could develop abroad. Uh, next, please. Okay, this is, uh, I think, Mr. Ambassador uh, Ngurah Swajaya has already mentioned uh, in, the, in this uh, presentation. Uh, the number of uh, Indonesian population, as you might already know, is close to 275 million uh, people. And the interesting number here is the number of users, uh, the internet users, which is uh, more than 175 million. Uh, another interesting number is the number of mobile phone connection, uh, the active numbers. 
uh, which is more than 300 million uh, that also more than the number of, of the population itself so i think this is probably common in in other countries as well next please and <clears throat> next please next please sorry yeah uh we if so, so, uh, previous one sorry yeah no no previous one sorry previous one Ma, sorry. Uh, yeah okay um no no previous one yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no oh, sorry <laughs> I think the the the, the players uh, the slide player is uh, going on, but if you could uh, go back yep. uh, the slide, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, stop there. Okay, I, I'm just going to talk about uh, how the uh, impact uh, and opportunities of creative economy and combine that with the digital economy as well. As no, probably if you take a look at the, the if you take a look at uh, the thing that I put in, uh, on the slide there, like for example, Pokemon, Hello Kitty, Star Wars, Harry Potter, uh, Phantom of the Opera, and as well as uh, our uh, own uh, Gojek. They are all based on creative economy, and if you know, if you notice, there uh, Pokemon uh, values right now the market values is uh, close to hundred billion US dollars, or in our rupiah is uh, more than uh, fifteen hundred, uh, uh, more than fourteen hundred trillion rupiah. So that's the number that a creative economy can impact in term uh, in term of the, the the value itself, and everything, and we believe everything, uh, every sub sectors of the creative economy. Uh, will be going into digital. Now, on the other side of the slides, if you can see there, uh, a part, uh, the, the, the part of the number of the internet users that we have, 175 millions, uh, according to the Google Temasek uh, study, uh, last year's the value of Indonesia internet economy, okay, internet economy is uh, 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 close to 40 billion US dollars. Uh, for the e-commerce itself, I think it was close to 33 billion US dollars. But they also predicted that in the 2025, the number of the internet, uh, the value of the internet economy in Asia is uh, going to be 133 US dollars. Take a look at the, our e-commerce uh, uh, landscape. The, the number of Indonesian local products that, uh, that are uh, being uh, transacted in the e-commerce uh, platform in Indonesia, some, some said, uh, uh, it's less than 30 percent others said it's less than 10 percent uh, otherwise and our uh, Indonesian creative business unit is more than eight millions or uh, the other uh, uh, the general SMEs uh, numbers in Indonesia is uh, close to 60 million uh, SMEs small and medium and micro small and medium enterprises and only uh, close to nine millions already uh, using uh, uh, e-commerce platform. So we still have a lot of uh, ground to cover uh, in, in terms of uh, transforming them into the digital world. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, stop. Now, this is the, 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 the digital ecosystem as we see it. So we need to have resources, of course, infrastructures, technology, uh, financing, product and services, policy and regulations. And on those elements, uh, for example, resources we just we don't we just don't need, uh, we don't just need uh, humans, but also we need other resources, including uh, uh, natural resources, for example, uh, radio frequency, or artificial uh, resources such as internet protocol, uh, IP4 and IP4.6, uh, as well as domain name, infrastructure. As you know, that we need. Uh, uh, network, of course, data centers, if you are talking about digital ecosystem and technology, uh, other than operating system, we need uh, 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 emerging technologies are coming in and they are going to take uh, on the digital ecosystem as well, such as blockchain, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, big data, 5G, for example, Internet of Things and so on. 
financing in term of digital ecosystem uh, there are uh, several op uh, alternative financing financing and for startups usually they opt for the uh, angel investor as well as, as well as the venture capital uh, now nowadays also banks uh, the conventional financial uh, system already uh, look at the, the the digital ecosystems financing as well now product and services uh, of course the the digital economy the product of this digital ecosystem our digital economy uh, uh, based mostly are in the, in the form of uh, services as well as product uh, digital products such as apps and content as well and in term of the digital ecosystem as well we need to have a policy and regulation in place uh, to make uh, this uh, digital ecosystem works uh, uh, as as we intended to, to work next please now this is uh, what we have done uh, previously before joining with the uh, ministry of tourism uh, we are uh, called the uh, uh, indonesian agency for creative economy or becra and uh, so one of the program that uh, we try to build is to uh, build a pipeline for uh, the digital uh, economy itself uh, from from the uh, from the one end to the other end so we try to co cover the whole ground uh, and, and we try to continue this in our uh, new uh, uh, merger merge, merge, merge of the ministry and the agency as well so for example we have on on the talent development for example digital talent development we have this what we call a Bapak Recraft developer day uh, it basically trying to uh, bridges local de developers in all in all over indonesia at one point we even go to jayapura in papua uh, manado in in sulawesi uh, in north sulawesi uh, to make sure that we have enough digital talent and we have uh, 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 we connected with them. Uh, they, they are connected with the technology, the emerging technology that they, uh, that, that that are coming up. Uh, and then we also have the Bapak Recraft De Developer Conference. This is for the top developers to gather and to uh, to talk about the the technology that are coming up and what they have done. Uh, uh, usually, this is a developer that already produce some of the most download downloadable uh, downloaded uh, apps uh, in app stores or in play stores as well and then if those who wants to become uh, startups uh, we have a program called backup uh, backup for uh, or bapa rekra for uh, startups now or if you want to transform from the uh, off offline to online uh, platform we have what we call BDE Bapak Recraft Digital Entrepreneurship. This is for the conventional SMEs to, to engage into, uh, uh, to onboard uh, the e-commerce uh, digital uh, eco economy ecosystems. Uh, and then we also have uh, Bantuan Pemerintah or government assistance, or, as well as a government uh, incentive program, uh, BIP. This is basically providing them, uh, providing with the startups and the uh, the uh, creative uh, economy uh, players or with uh, finance as well as uh, in, in kind uh, support, for example, like uh, tools, uh, software, hardware, and so on. And when they have products, uh, uh, for example, in the uh, game, for example, game, we also have uh, provide them provide them with the, some kind of uh, events, uh, national events, as well as uh, later on, we also have the international participating in international event as well. So for the national event, for example, it's, we call it a game prime, Bapak Recraft game prime is still going on right now. Uh, actually today, uh, it was starting last last uh, Saturday and today, uh, last yesterday and today is for the uh, e-sport uh, part of it. Uh, and for the startup, we have uh, Go Startup Indonesia, and we are uh, going to uh, as a pipeline from the pro our program uh, of backup. And for uh, if they want to uh, export their product, their, their digital product, we also uh, facilitate them uh, into participate in, in international. For example, South uh, South uh, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, for digital products, uh, Gamescom and Games Connection America for 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 uh, uh, digital games, for video games, 
and uh, uh, especially for the game uh, connect, co connection uh, in America in San Francisco, I, I noticed that a lot of uh, Southern American uh, countries also uh, have their pavilions over there, uh, bringing uh, their uh, game developers uh, to come to the uh, game connection uh, America in San Francisco. So this is probably a, 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 a place where where digital uh, uh, digital products, uh, digital uh, uh, startups producer uh, meet. Next, please. Next, please. <clears throat> This is just some some of the landscape of Indonesian startups uh, for the digital economy. Um, on the on the left side, it's for the SMEs landscape. For example, is a lot, including Bukalapak, is there uh, for B two C or B two C and C two C marketplace. Uh, all these are the uh, Indonesian startups that are there uh, that are uh, uh, there to to cater for the the need of the SMEs. On the right side is our landscape, uh, Indonesian landscape for the health tech uh, startups. Uh, a lot of uh, right now because of the COVID, because of the the, the, the geographical condition of Indonesia itself, uh, uh, I, I believe that health tech uh, should be the next uh, the next uh, way to go for startups uh, for for us, especially for the nation to be able to provide uh, uh, quality. And, and affordable uh, health uh, services. Next, please. This is just some of the example that, that a few notable startups that we think is going to be uh, big in the in the in the futures. For example, for this Hati Tele CTG is basically an application based uh, CTG. Uh, this is for detecting monitor fetal well being for the the the, the heartbeats. Uh, that can be used by midwives and doctors in both rural as well as urban area uh, to provide uh, high quality of maternal health services. Uh, the other one is Hara. Uh, Hara is basically uh, uh, a blockchain uh, based, uh, blockchain technology based uh, startups that, that use the technology to uh, connect uh, rural small farmers with banks, insurance companies, uh, input producer, and so on. And the other one is e fisheries. Uh, this is basically IoT-based uh, startups that use data and technology uh, to help uh, parties in aquaculture ecosystem, uh, making farmers uh, be able to gain the opportunity to, to increase the productivity as well. So this is some of the, the, the uh, like the ambassador uh, Ngura uh, uh, mentioned before, we have close to 3,000, uh, more than 2,000 startups uh, in Indonesia, and this is just uh, some, some of them. Next, please. Manil, kalau boleh dua menit lagi ya, Pak. Yeah, this is the last one. Um, I just want to mention a bit about about Gojek, uh, the the, uh, the uh, one of the our Decacorn actually. This is, they already have, have a, a exist uh, existence in five countries in 200 more than 200 uh, cities. They have two million uh, drivers, more than 400 uh, thousand merchants uh, in their platforms. And their uh, GTV uh, gross transaction values is uh, more than nine billion, and they just I, I think last year uh, valued at more than ten billions. And we can also say that that uh, the facto e-commerce platform because everything is there. Uh, this is just a question: uh, Is this going to be uh, the thing that you know? Is it too big to fail? And and I believe this is this is my, uh, our prediction. Uh, is two years ago actually I predicted that GoPay is going to be uh, the next unicorn. And actually, uh, just a few uh, weeks ago, just a few days ago, uh, GoPay is considered uh, valued as more than one billion. The next one, I think, I believe is going to be GoFood and GoSense is also going to be uh, the, our next unicorn. Uh, I think that's uh, how my my presentation, and uh, I open to the discussion. And thank you for pro providing me uh, the chance to talk in this uh, occasion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pa Neil and Himam. Uh, that was uh, clearly very very uh, enlightening for us uh, to see the whole landscape of Indonesian uh, e-commerce e right now, and. Uh, Allow me to make a, a, a minor change to the order of the speakers. Uh, may I now invite uh, His Excellency Ambassador Gustavo Ayares 
uh, to uh, make his presentation. Uh, you have the floor, Ambassador. Very good morning to everybody. Uh, <clears throat> my colleague Pablo, uh, we will uh, pass some slide, okay? But I would like to first um, express our gratitude to Kemblo, um, also to the Ministry of Tourism. Um, um, also, I express my appreciation that some Amer Latin American ambassadors are um, with us uh, this morning, so because it's an issue that is very important for us. But first of all, I would like to express um, uh, on behalf of the Pacific Alliance Ambassador and all the Latin American Ambassador present here, our sincere wishes of success to His Excellency Ambassador Nura as the new DG for, uh, Latin, for American and Neo European Affairs. Uh, I had the privilege to um, meet him in Singapore last year, and hopefully we will see him soon, sooner than later when you know all this. <laughs> Um, and, and protocols um, are, uh, you know, uh, we are moving to the next stage. Before uh, making some precise comments on the digital uh, ecosystem in, in Latin America, specifically in within Pacific Alliance, I would like to uh, make some uh, preliminary comments regarding the crisis uh, provoked in, in Latin America with the COVID-19. As um, you may observe, the current crisis has demanded in, in all regions rethink aspects of traditional agendas. Before uh, November uh, 2019, the global agenda was already under by various disruption. Um, it, 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 one of them, some of them are, for example, the broken consensus uh, regarding globalization, the weak role of the WTO, the, cri the crisis provoked by climate change, declining commodity prices, and the impact of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, from the very beginning of 2020, the picture already changed in a very dramatic way, um, adding some uncertainties, and especially uh, fear for the future. Uh, surely passing through this period of emergency, the world population will be poorer and more vulnerable, demanding concrete action from the government to recover the economy and the, uh, protect the citizens. Uh, during the crisis, Latin American countries, as we observe in ASEAN, enhances policies aiming to promote telemedicine, e-commerce, edu educational technologies, uh, boost fine tech, strengthening e government, in other words, to make digital transformation as a reality. The numbers, as we know today, speak that the, the GDP average in Latin America will suffer a constriction of at least 9%. Uh, as a, in other region of the world, Latin America will suffer severe effects such as uh, searching uh, poverty, unemployment, and uh, other social indicators uh, will uh, surely uh, suffer a, ne a negative turn. In order uh, for, um, in order to uh, uh, to um, to revert the effect of the crisis, we think that uh, the leaders should accept our leaders in Latin America should have said that business as usual is not going to be enough to recover economic expectations, especially if we recognize uh, the opportunity to reposition itself in the global uh, value chain and to be appealing choice for destination for global investments. As for the Pacific Alliance, we have been undertaking several initiatives regarding uh, uh, in the context of the crisis. In fact, uh, we recognize that in the, uh, innovation is one of the key factors to uh, move forward uh, from the uh, current situation. As part of the digital agenda, we are working to ensure the expansion of digital commerce through the members of Pacific Alliance and to extend its benefits to the broader population through the implementation of a roadmap, agree and telecommunication and electronic commerce chapters of the commercial protocol of the Pacific Alliance and even some of the specific aspects of the regional digital agenda approved in 2015 in Mexico City during the fifth ministerial conference. 
Since uh, the Alliance has a common standard ambitions on telecommunication and electronic commerce, uh, this roadmap aims to reduce the digital divide between countries of the Pacific Alliance and move towards uh, an inclusive and sustainable digital development that it will allow us to create an attractive digital market among our members and thus achieve a greater competitiveness at the international level. So Pacific Alliance is working on uh, that we have been called Regional Digital Market, RDM, which aims to identify opportunities and barriers associated with the e-commerce in coordination with the ministry responsible for this uh, for foreign trade. But before to move uh, precisely on these issues and development, I would like to uh, propose to you some uh, view regarding uh, Pacific Alliance. Next, please. So as you can see, uh, Pacific Alliance covered Mexico to Chile in, in practical in terms of uh, from Central America, northern, northern part of uh, Latin America till Patagonia. Uh, we, as, a, as uh, you already know, Pacific Alliance has been promoting the four pillars, uh, free movement of flow, uh, and free movement of uh, person, uh, uh, goods, capital, and um, I don't remember the phone one, but I mean the typical pillar. Uh, we would like also to, next please, we would like to offer the possibility of a wide integration, especially in trade facilitation, uh, free movement of people, innovation and entrepreneurship, and, uh, um, and create a an, an visible platform for academic and student mobility. Next. Uh, in, in very few numbers, uh, we are talking about around the, the four Pacific Alliance members, uh, we are talking about around 230 million pe uh, people with an average of 19,000 per capita product in, in 2019. And our export uh, roughly is around 630 uh, US dollar billions. Those figures except the population maybe we must review uh, after uh, the crisis. Next. So um, regarding e-commerce, uh, Mexico is, is a leader in our region, followed by Colombia, uh, Chile, and Peru. The numbers are there. Uh, for obvious reason, uh, the most uh, extensive market in, in, in Pacific Alliance is the Mexican one. Uh, but uh, uh, in, we are, let's say, uh, under the standard of the OECD, under the average. So our, our goal is to, to be closer to the OECD. I, could remember, I would like to remember you that uh, Mexico and Chile are a member of the OECD. So our standard are uh, normally measured under the OECD um, uh, rule. Next. So as I told you before, Pacific Alliance uh, created a concept, a regional digital market, um, uh, in order to free flow of digital products, goods, and services, tried online as a world capital. Uh, of course, uh, our focus is uh, regarding the uh, S um, NSS, uh, especially in order to generate exportable content among the Pacific Alliance. Um, of course, to keep the same condition as uh, they were men, uh, made in, in the same country or city. This is, is a full integration market, according to our, from, from our perspective. Um, also, we would like to see uh, opportunities, uh, eliminating barriers and, and use uh, digital uh, uh, <coughs> tools. Next. Um, we, um, we have uh, this... Um, a political statement that I think is very important to remind that was um, adopted in, in Cali, Colombia, and that we created this uh, particular uh, uh, digital market platform uh, in order to, uh, um, to move the fourth countries in the same direction. We have an, an three main objectives. Siguiente, por favor. That one, the first one is to uh, encouraging the uh, establishment of uh, the infrastructure, infrastructure that enables us uh, without interruption, the free flow treatment, storage, and processing of data, and the change of physical goods purchased through a digital platform. 
digital products or the provision of uh, digital services. Uh, the, the mechanism that we use, uh, the use of new technology on internet, use of distribution, uh, efficient management and the radio spectrum, also to promote uh, the use of online payment system among other things. The second goal is to promote in, uh, the establishment of compatible norms and standard among members of the fo in the following areas, like uh, technical interoperability, uh, technolog technological neutrality, balance a model of privacy, consumer protection, civil security, free competition, compatibility of the intellectual property normally applicable to digital works, mutual recognition of electronic certificates, where we are working very hard on paperless commerce, electronic single window for free trade, and so on. And the third is to strengthen the availability of contents of regional importance that have been developed by the, uh, each one of the agencies, uh, export promotion agencies in each of the um, Pacific Alliance countries. Uh, the initiative, the whole initiative is designed to stage, but having, as you know, uh, gain uh, a high priority considering the current crisis. As I said before, our uh, numbers are not good. Uh, we expected that we have many things that we need to cover. So this uh, new concept of um, a, a regional uh, NDR is, is, is today is essential for our governments. So we expected that in the next presidential summit that hopefully is, is everything is going okay, will be celebrated in Chile in December, uh, we expected that we uh, could reconfirm our, uh, and take new measures in order to um, enhance and boost this um, um, uh, new uh, uh, step within the Pacific Alliance regarding um, the electronic trade. Before uh, I finish, I would like to say a few words regarding DEPA. Uh, DEPA is uh, this a digital economy partnership agreement that has uh, been signed by Chile, New Zealand, and Singapore that seeks to promote collaboration in the field of digital economy. Its main objective looks to establish a, a normative and cooperative framework that helps these three small economies of the Pacific Ocean to promote their markets for the development of the digital economy. It was signed in June. Um, in sync, uh, actually was uh, uh, was digital signed. It was the very first international agreement in Chile that was signed uh, by digital means. Uh, DEPA establishes new rules to facilitate cross-border digital trade. It's built on uh, on the most advanced agreement like uh, U.S., Mexico, Canada, to ensure open data flow, which underpin the modern economy. It also includes standards that will enable cross-border electronic payments and ensure privacy and uh, cyber security. Just uh, traditional trade agreements uh, help reduce the uh, regulatory friction between trade and partners for the adoption of rule standards of those important next generation digital trade issues. And also we facilitate this uh, seamless integration of digital economy and create new opportunities for um, this area of the business. Chile is working hardly in order to invite other Latin American countries to be part of this agreement, convinced that it's an effective path uh, for the current situation. We also would like to see Indonesia as a partner as a new form of establishing business relationship. And I would like to uh, finalize my words uh, um, um, informing you that uh, Chile uh, has agreed to connect uh, by optical fiber, uh, um, the most modern connectivity, digital connectivity within, within, uh, within uh, Latin, uh, America, Latin America and Asia by a cable that connects through Australia, New Zealand to the rest of the Asia. This is very important for us because it's the most modern technology to uh, uh, take advantage of all the big data we produce in Latin America. This is a new or uh, very new project that being supported by many Latin American countries. I think those are my words and I'm ready to answer uh, any questions that you, you have for, for 
for not exactly for Chile. I'm representing the four Latin American countries that we are member of the Pacific Alliance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was uh, that that has given us a very clear picture on the landscape of the commerce uh, in, in in Pacific Alliance member countries. Uh, so, uh, Excellencies, dear participants, now we have seen a very clear picture now of the landscape, both in Indonesia and also in the Pacific Alliance member countries on the digital economy, on the e-commerce. Uh, what uh, what in, in what kind of uh, settings the government is ready to, to you know, to, to, to push, to, to uh, give or provide an enabling environment for the SMEs and e-commerce to grow and interact with each other. Now we will move to the second part of the, 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 the speakers uh, from the, the practitioners, from the business itself. Uh, first, let me invite uh, Bapak Rofi Udarojat uh, from the Indonesian e-commerce association. Uh, uh, we, uh, hope that Pa Rofi can illustrate uh, uh, illustrate Indonesia's e-commerce ecosystem in the midst of COVID-19 and how e-commerce uh, could help uh, our small and medium enterprises to penetrate the global market. And we have also been informed that there are now initiatives to encourage uh, the SMEs to go digital and expand their market reach. Uh, market reach. Uh, please, Pa Rofi. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Bapak Masni Reza, the moderator, uh, Mr. Director General, Bapak Ngurah Swajaya, uh, Mr. Ambassador for Chile, His Excellency Gustavo Ayares, Ambassadors of Indonesia to the Pacific Alliance member countries, Ambassadors of the Pacific Alliance member countries in Jakarta, and other distinguished uh, speakers, Pak Nil El Himam from Paragraph and Mbak Kurnia from Bukalapak. Uh, I would like to thank um, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, first of all, for the invitation that allows me to speak at this important event. Uh, I think this is important because, as we know, digital transformation has benefited uh, millions of Indonesian people, open up access to a livelihood for our middle class community, benefiting the low middle income household, as well as empowering women. Uh, I would like to talk more about what current situations, what is the fact, in our digital economy and uh, how we cope with this pandemic and what we can do uh, to promote a two regions friendship to digital economy. Um, yeah, next slide, please. Um, yeah, I would like to uh, uh, introduce my own uh, organization first. Uh, uh, we, Indonesian e-commerce associations established in 2012 by nine e-commerce companies. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have more than 236 members, e-commerce companies that include some of the business models that, I mean, I, I have already included here, a marketplace, online, the retails, uh, as well as the OTA travel agencies and red hailing as it in the ecosystem e-commerce. So our activities include advising business members, leading policy advocacy, conducting events, so on and so forth. So I think this uh, like of the common the business association. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, what is the number? So how big are we, Indonesia? Uh, what steps are we already on? So Indonesia digital ecosystem is growing rapidly and it provides golden opportunities to boost domestic economy. As we know, the population is 272 million and urbanization is 55% of the population. So uh, not only the middle class coming to the city from the villages for work, from the rural area to work, but also they're able to access the digital infrastructure. So, I think that's also the big privilege for the most of Indonesian uh, people. Uh, mobile phone connection, as we know, is uh, around 300 million. Uh, it is around 124% from the population, it's quite a big number. And internet user is 175 million people. It is around 64% uh, of the population. And the active social media users, sometimes it's very noise here in Indonesia, the social media user is 59%. So I think this is uh, describing our potential and also uh, you know, the current situation, how can we contribute to the world and as, as well as to uh, provide the big insight, how can we boost the domestic economy 
uh, from our potential in the digital economy. So, uh, so how big are we? Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So, uh, according to the study from the Google Temasek report in 2020, uh, our gross merchandise volume is 40 billion. Uh, it is, I mean, put it in the perspective, it's around 40% of the Southeast Asia GMV. And we are currently the biggest uh, digital economy in South Asia. So, uh, I mean, in next 25, uh, in, in next five years, we probably uh, achieve 100 billion uh, GMV according to the estimation from the, the Google Temasek. So, so this is uh, from, the, from the other report. So we want to, uh, uh, explore, you know, uh, what is the actual actual number? So our number would probably give the, the other ex explanation in terms of the the, the 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 scale of the digital economy in Indonesia. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So I want to tell a story. Um, so every year we have a, a quite a sacred kind of day, so online sale day, national online sale day. We call it Hari Blanja Online National or Harbolnas. So we had uh, every year and uh, in, in 12 December, so it's quite sexy uh, date, you know, 12, 12. So we got a very massive promotion for almost all the e-commerce companies to give the promos and discounts. And uh, last year, uh, we actually uh, formed the idea, we are the main organizers, so we can have the, you know, the, the, the insight from, from the, the national uh, online sale day. So basically what, uh, what we can identify is, uh, actually we have a 9.1 trillion rupiah or around uh, 624 billion transaction in two days. So basically we have a 12 December and one the, the one day before the D-Day is actually uh, uh, the, the, we, we focus on the local product. So what's interesting is, you know, uh, the 55, 51%, so more than 50% of the transaction is actually uh, coming from the local product. So, I mean, what we can tell is, the number tell us that the e-commerce has not only accommodated the big companies product, you know, uh, the very expensive product or even imported product as we heard in the media, but also providing the equal opportunity for the local product to rise. The, our message would be, we believe that our SMEs, the small medium enterprises can compete with big companies in our platform. With innovative technology, they can compete because they don't need to pay for the location rent and other unnecessary costs. So this number also tell us that we have a growing online domestic consumers. Uh, it is uh, 138.1 million users. Uh, uh, it's you know almost 50% of the total populations. Uh, so this is our number. So I think it is very important to think about the, how we actually uh, achieve. Uh, it is very uh, uh, it is very exciting. Uh, uh, so so I think this is our time to, to explore more with the, our other nations. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is the e-wallet transaction is uh, 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 numbers. So during Harbol, Harbol NAS 2019, we identified e-wallet was primary payment method while ATM transfer and mobile banking was declining. So I think this is very, um, very interesting facts that FinTech has been gaining in popularity over the years as it enables the unbanked and people in remote areas to access financial services. I think it is quite funny because uh, in the country with uh, bank uh, penetration and credit card uh, payment is quite low. I mean, it's around 64%. Uh, I mean, there are currently more than 30% of people out there in Indonesia who hasn't accessed the banking, uh, uh, banking system. Uh, and as, uh, as well as we don't have a lot of people who are using the credit card payment. But in the same time, there's also growing of e wallet transaction. So I think this is very exciting and also uh, surprising facts that Indonesia, uh, Indonesian peoples are actually adapting to the new, uh, the new technology e wallet. Uh, while I mean, uh, if we if we say about that, 
uh, how the e-wallet is actually helping the middle class uh, uh, income household, I mean, the SMEs, the consumers, and so on and so forth. Um, so next slide, please. So yeah, let's talk about the impact. Uh, digital economy is unleashing a socio-economic impact across the country. Uh, at least 30% of online e-commerce spending is new consumption, capturing previously untapped needs. You know, uh, we often heard from the media that the online commerce is actually predatory towards the offline uh, uh, commerce. So I don't think that's quite true. I mean, according to the study, we actually generate the, the new uh, spend, the new consumption from the people who actually hasn't uh, 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 generated the access to the, to the effective or efficient commerce. So they actually uh, gaining the benefit from the online e-commerce without actually, you know, uh, becoming predatory towards the off offline commerce. Uh, so the, the second uh, impact is I would like to also describe about the about the jobs creation, 26 million jobs supported primarily at micro, small, medium enterprises, SMEs. And I can say that more than 90% of our merchants are SMEs. So, uh, so uh, it is also, you know, we, we are supporting the low income household uh, at, uh, at this uh, very moment. So... Um, the next point, about 90% of e-commerce transactions from one platform, I, I, I put a Tokopedia here, in Eastern Indonesia, is originated from Western and Central Indonesia. It indicates that online commerce is connecting all regions in Indonesia. So online commerce not only benefiting the, the, the main or, or the main island Java, at, uh, at, I would say. Uh, so the Eastern part, the Central part, the remote area is also uh, has benefit from the online commerce. Uh, the consumers in Nunjava uh, saving from 12 until 25% by shopping via online commerce. So I think it's a very um, uh, interesting uh, finding that the poor people the re in remote areas is actually gaining benefit from the online commerce. And this the last thing is very interesting. Up to 35% of online revenue is generated by women compared with 15% in offline retail. As I said before, that 90% of online uh, merchants in our platform are micro enterprises. They are people who started the business that, uh, I mean, those people are like housewife, students, unemployed, they see opportunities in online platforms. And I think it's uh, actually empowering the women. So for example, the housewife, I mean, instead of they just uh, take care of Take care of the children in the home while they have a spare time they can also you know uh, becoming the sellers in the online platform um, okay so that's impact so I want to also talk about the uh, the, 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 the the COVID-19 the pandemics uh, next slide please yeah so this is how we cope with uh, COVID-19 so actually it affects ah, people people people. People. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is, I think, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, how we cope with uh, COVID-19 uh, because it's very limited time. I think I would like to skip it. Uh, uh, next slide, please. So, okay, this is our program to counter the COVID-19. We launched movement of Bangga Buatan Indonesia. Uh, it is proud of Indonesian made to counter effects of the COVID-19, campaigning on micro, small, medium enterprises to onboard digitally to e-commerce platforms, providing access to online offline training on how to scale up their businesses as well as, as, well as access to micro loan banks. So just a few weeks before the, we, we are incorporated with the Himbara, the, the association of the state banks to, to, to distribute the loan from the banks to the, our merchants, helping 14 ministries and agency within the national government to achieve 2 million onboarded uh, SMEs until the end of 2020. Just Three months after the launching, I mean, we gladly say that it's already uh, 1.4 uh, million uh, MS SMEs uh, already onboarded to the platform. So I think uh, that's quite an achievement. Next slide, please. Yeah, so finally, I would like to suggest to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also uh, here with, uh, with uh, our uh, honorable diplomats, how to actually uh, building a bridge between Indonesia and Pacific alliances. 
Uh, the first is how we, we can establish a digital hub to facilitate communication among digital players and investors between two regions. Uh, I would like to uh, put the example of the ASEAN summit uh, with the South Korean, uh, uh, with South Korea uh, just last year, if I'm not mistaken, that uh, I mean, within the events of the summit, uh, we actually had the events of the, the the digital players, you know, how we can share the knowledge and skills and how can we can learn each other from the two uh, great uh, from the each nations. So I think uh, some of the our players are invited to the summit. And I think that would be the great opportunity later. Later, I mean, digitally or later, if we after the pandemic, if you guys have summit and I think it's very important to to have that, those kind of events. And the second is facilitate potential cooperation among digital platforms from skill and knowledge transfer. I think that uh, the, the, the event that I was that I have mentioned, I think this is uh, very strongly correlated with the second point. This, uh, the third point uh, would be the exploring new markets in two regions to help MSE, uh, SMEs from each uh, countries. So I think we can promote our own SMEs from Indonesia and uh, SMEs from the Pacific Alliance member countries to actually, you know, to, to explore the new markets in Indonesia or in uh, Pacific Alliance countries. Uh, the, four, uh, the, 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 and the next point would be the facilitate cross-border e-commerce among Indonesia and Pacific Alliance countries. This would be very complicated because it would, be, it would require the next step, uh, uh, how, to, how to deal with this kind of policies, you know, the logistics, some th so on and so forth. Uh, I would like to also, uh, you know, mention about the last point about the help, help to establish logistic partnership to tackle logistical challenges, as well as to reduce the shipping costs. I think this is very important if you want to have a connection uh, from Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance countries. So uh, the last point I would like to mention is building product database. It is very important for us between two regions to strengthen uh, SME's digital marketing. And I think it is... Uh, this is the task that could be implemented uh, by the, uh, the embassies uh, within uh, the Indonesia or the Pacific Alliance countries, I think, uh, because they are the most likely to know, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, each of the product that at best, what is the, our strength or our, what is the, the potential product that could be uh, 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 marketed in the, the Pacific Alliance countries uh, that also apply to the Indonesia. So uh, I think that I want to propose uh, Pak Masni and other speakers. Uh, uh, I hope this could help our friendship more and building the bridge of diplomacy with Indonesia and Pacific Alliance countries. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pak Rofi. Uh, uh, that was a very clear explanation indeed uh, on what the, the, the industry setting now in Indonesia. Uh, let me now uh, move to our last, but certainly not the least speaker, Ibu Kurnia Sofia Roshada, uh, Vice President of Marketplace of Bukalapak. Of course, uh, most of you, I think all of you know about Bukalapak, even, even the, the ambassadors know about the, the Bukalapak. Many argue that with the advancement of e-commerce, uh, people using the internet for their purchases no longer need to be physically present when, when their transactions occur. And uh, e-commerce, of course, not only has created major changes in the retail and service industries, but also has led to business development, related uh, to communication on economic factors and improved productivity, reduced costs, and saves time for our uh, small and medium enterprises. And for sure, as one of the leading e-commerce sites in Indonesia, Bukalapak has a major role in developing Indonesia's SMEs through digital connectivity. Now, of course, we I would like to hear more directly from Ibu Kurnia's uh, Sofia Roshada. Uh, the floor is yours, Ibu. We would highly appreciate it if you could uh, kindly uh, give your presentation within uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Please, Ibu, you have the floor. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pak. Uh, thank you so much for the, for the time, uh, everyone. So uh, I'll be uh, sharing a bit about uh, Bukalapa and also um, and also some update as well related with the COVID and um, and also like a potential uh, potential collaborations that an e-commerce or technology startup can can have um, in in a cross border uh, in a cross border context. 
Okay, uh, so yeah, um, I'll be sharing a, a PPT, uh, just a moment. Okay, uh, can everyone see my screen? The loading will. Yeah, just a moment. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, good morning everyone. Um, so today we will be um, we will be studying a bit about how to open more opportunities with Abu Kalapa and also to grab the uh, opportunity and tackling the challenge in developing your business uh, to penetrate the global market. So just a quick glance about Bukalapa. Um, so as one of the e-commerce in Indonesia, we have more than 90 uh, million monthly active visitors. Uh, and we have um, more than 2 million daily transactions that we handle um, in every day. Um, and there's also like uh, more than 5 million of monthly active sellers uh, that are with us. And uh, there is also 2.5 million of Mitra Bukalapa across Indonesia. So uh, just a bit of a snapshot as well. So we have uh, been present in the e-commerce landscape for more than 10 years. Um, and with 2020, we actually uh, changed a bit on, uh, on our vision. So what we want is um, an enablement of like financial inclusions and also fair economy for all. And this way we are focusing on building SME. So continuously innovating and supporting the SME by recently, uh, for example, recently partnering with Google to register more than uh, 95,000 of traditional stalls uh, in Google Map and Search. And we are also um, awarded as a fastest growing company uh, in APAC, uh, according to the Financial Times and also, um, yeah, and ups yeah, and, and in this case, um, for Bukalapa, the product itself are uh, basically divided into three, which is uh, first is the online marketplace, uh, secondly, Samitra Bukalapa, which is where we empowered all of the uh, offline stalls um, or warungs in, 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 in Bahasa. And we also have a virtual products, which include um, a phone credits or payment top up or uh, even for paying taxes. Um, and also for uh, remittance. Okay. Uh, from the Bukalapa marketplace uh, channels, um, we have three types of um, of a merchants. In this case, it's a super seller, Bukamol, and also B2B. And um, in order to uh, operate uh, itself, we are focusing on a data-driven uh, partnership um, with all of our merchants and also brands. And in this case, we provide data and insight with them for empowering um, our merchants um, to drive a meaningful and impactful decisions in their sales and marketing goals. We also continuously innovate and um, and also co continue to do a test uh, test cases um, in achieving their marketing goals. In our uh, platforms, uh, there are multiple categories, um, which is. Uh, some of our top categories, including tools and utilities, consumer electronic, consumer goods, and, and patients. So, uh, would would like to uh, share a little bit about the impact of uh, COVID nineteen. So, what we see during this uh, COVID nineteen, um, even though it is a challenging situation, but um, but what we what we saw is that uh, there is a surging consumer interest. So, the changes in the lockdown regulation, for example, uh, has causing the shift in the consumer lifestyle and uh, also including our product requirements. What it means is um, brands and advertisers need to stay current uh, to plan ahead and also be helpful by connecting with the consumer behavior. We also see a lot of an opportunity in terms of the new user growth. Uh, in this case, um, with the new users that uh, probably um, they uh, haven't made an online purchase just yet, we need to build hypothesis to understand who they are uh, and we see an increasing or emerging um, customers coming from a tier two and tier three cities. Um, and also we need to validate uh, and search for the trends because um, what, what, what we see as well that there is an, a changing behavior in the product that uh, customers are looking. Um, and also there is an accelerated video consumptions um, and also um, an increasing number of entrepreneur schools online, which is um, basically the local uh, small and medium businesses that are moving online due to the either offline restrictions as well as the growing online consumer demands. 
Uh, what what is also interesting is that during the COVID, what we see is um, every week there is a changing behavior on what product that that are uh, trending. So, for example, in the beginning, um, there was a, a rising demand related with a surgical mask, and then followed with a hand sanitizer. Um, and we see as well that online groceries are uh, continuously growing. But what's also interesting is that entertainment is uh, growing very rapidly uh, along with the office setup as more and more people are actually working from home. Um, and in Indonesia specific, what we see as well, um, there are more uh, customer embracing a specific hobby. So for example, like gardening um, and bicycle uh, are becoming a very uh, trending in, in, in the market right now. But uh, this change uh, or these trends actually um, happen pretty fast. So, um, so we need to monitor as well what, what is trending, uh, not only in a monthly basis, but more importantly, is also at, a, at every week, uh, at every weekly basis. Uh, because what is popular last week might not be the same uh, this week. Um, and what, what is also interesting is that um, we need to also be prepared once the COVID-19 uh, in this case uh, are going to be eased because um, because when we ask a customer like, okay, what, what are the things that you are excited about the moment that, um, that you uh, have the outbreak uh, completed? And, uh, and many of them are answering like either they want to go out for dining or they go shopping. So we, we need to also like um, preparing for uh, the recovery part of, uh, of a COVID. Um, so in in and in in, uh, in, and in this uh, new normal, uh, basically, um, we uh, we try to help uh, some of our merchants by providing more insight of what are the trending product, what are the trending keywords, what kind of SKU uh, or items that they need to start sourcing, um, and also like sharing uh, the changing customer behavior so that they they stay um, they stay um, relevant. And not being complacent with um, with the with the with the market, and um, and during this uh, COVID is as well. Um, what we see is that online becoming a priority channel uh, versus complementary. So more and more um, customers actually seeing online as the priority of uh, shopping channels as opposed to offline. Uh, and we also see an accelerated uh, retailers becoming online. They produce their own digital catalogs. Uh, they work with a lot of e-commerce um, platforms to, to sell their items. They even host uh, an offline event um, into online. And, uh, and sometimes a physical store is uh, either just used uh, as a collect, but not at the main, uh, as a main uh, purchase, um, purchase uh, point anymore. So, but yeah, so so yeah, these are some some example of like what we see at least in the market in Indonesia uh, on on the demand side. Like um, there is an increasing uh, needs for people looking for outwear motor, for uh, Muslim outwear, for um, ingredients, and, um, and and basically the I think these trends are going to continue. Uh, I think what, what what happened now is is just like um, fastening. Um, the changing behavior in our customer to purchase online, uh, and in this case, I think um, it it is quite <coughs> crucial for us uh, to be able to capture uh, this this demand. And um, and 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 in Bukalapa, basically, we try to connect uh, both online and offline uh, with um, with our platform. So we have the offline uh, shoppers, or in this case, Mitra, uh, as well as online shoppers, um, and we work. Um, we work with them to uh, have like an ecosystem where they can complete uh, their purchase either online and or offline. And there is also like um, integration as well between uh, offline to online. So for example, like um, uh, our uh, offline shoppers in this case Mitra uh, are getting, an, uh, getting um, access as well for uh, our virtual products so that uh, we bring digital literacy to everyone. So, um, yeah, so, so the support that we provide for uh, merchants as well as brands uh, in order to grow is uh, through on-site placement, off-site co-marketing, um, games, as well as a campaign sponsorship, both in Bukalapa apps as well as in Mitra. Um, so for, for some of the merchants, in order to promote for uh, cross-border, we also have a product called Buka Global. 
So at a glance, uh, basically Buka Global uh, is focusing on helping the local sellers to reach a foreign market and bring distance between Indonesia and its diaspora closer to online platform. And uh, Bukalapa is the first Indonesian company who does uh, export cross, cross border. And currently we have a presence in Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Brunei. Uh, basically how it works is that uh, the customer in those countries can uh, access Bukalapa apps to purchase the items from Indonesia and they can enjoy the price similar to the Indonesian buyers. And uh, they just need to pick for the recipient's country um, and also process the payments. Then the delivery logistic partner of us will pick up the items from the seller's warehouse. Uh, what is also interesting is that it's relatively cheap. So the delivery fee for each of uh, 0.5 kilos, um, for example, in Singapore, is, will only cost them a 9.79 uh, Singaporean dollars. <laughs> And this has included both the delivery fee as well as the custom. Um, we also provide um, ability in our system to automatically calculate the task if the nominal amount has exceeding the maximum amount of import in, in each of the delivery country. Uh, and in this case for Buka Global, uh, basically we also have identified some of the uh, product that are more preferred by the foreign um, foreign customers. In this case, is either related with uh, food related or uh, makeup, as well as um, uh, some, some, some fashion uh, related items based on uh, the diaspora uh, of, of Indonesia uh, in, in those country uh, for starter. So uh, I think those uh, are a bit of a, uh, uh, a bit of an update from, from our side on how we can um, we can grow and collaborate with uh, different countries when it comes to the cross-border. I think in this case is actually uh, for how us can uh, empower our merchants to do an export, but I think in this case might also be good for uh, maybe exploring opportunity where, um, where the entrepreneurs in other countries perhaps to, um, to provide um, more variety of uh, items for our Indonesian <coughs> customers. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ibu Kurnia. Uh, that was uh, very clear uh, on what Bukalapa has been doing and, and, and ready to provide to other SMEs and, and, and to make sure that they have a, you know, uh, the, the business that you have been doing and that you have been doing with the partners so far. So, uh, uh, Excellencies, uh, distinguished speakers, uh, participants, uh, that was all our four speakers. Uh, now we, I think we have a very complete picture now on the potentials of the e-commerce in Indonesia and Pacific Alliance member countries. And you have seen uh, our two first speakers have laid out the very complete, uh, uh, you know, map or plan or landscape on the e-commerce in, in, in both our areas. And then the, the, the next two speakers has laid out also the real fact on the ground, the business, uh, the business in the moving uh, in the field of e-commerce. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have actually close to 100 questions uh, either posed through, through online and also uh, from, from our live video on YouTube. Uh, but I will try, uh, my colleagues have been trying to, you know, to, to make clusters of the, the, the questions and I uh, hope to uh, post that to, to our speakers involved so they can easily answer it instead of you know, po uh, asking them more than 80 questions. That, that quite, is quite impossible for the rest of the time we have. But uh, allow me to ask first, uh, before we go through, uh, to the questions, our ambassadors in the Pacific Island member countries, if they have uh, things to say or observations they have been making, <laughs> on the e-commerce in, in their areas. Uh, ambassadors, if I may, I, I would like to kindly ask you to speak. Well, unfortunately, we don't have much time left, so two, three minutes each. Uh, if I may, uh, may I invite Pak Chepi first, uh, our ambassador in Mexico City, and then Pak Prio Iswanto later, our ambassador in Colombia, Bogota, uh, Bogota, Colombia, and, uh, and then to Ibu Stella in, in, in Lima. Uh, Excellencies, you have the floor. Uh, kalau boleh, Bapak Ibu, dua tiga menit masing-masing, karena waktunya sudah tidak banyak lagi yang tersisa. Mohon maaf. Uh, 
Barangkali Pak Chepi, if you have any observation or or any point you would like to uh, share with uh, our audience, you have the floor, Pak Dubes Chepi. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for giving me a time. Uh, good morning, Jakarta. Good uh, evening to all uh, my colleagues in uh, Pacific Alliance. Uh, well, uh, this is a very good uh, presentation for all of you, for us. Uh, well, uh, so far in Mexico, there is a lot of opportunity to, to have uh, this, uh, this business, the e-commerce business. Uh, last year, uh, one of the uh, uh, Gojek people was in a contact with me to see the opportunity to come uh, for outbound investment in Mexico. And, and uh, well, uh, uh, there, there, is, there, is, there are still study uh, how's the character of the people in the uh, Pacific Alliance because this is a little bit uh, different compared to the, uh, the, to the Asian peoples. Uh, so far, a lot of uh, Mexican people, could, could, could I say, that um, a lot of Mexican people, they are, um, uh, well, uh, they prefer to buy a, a consumer product by directly to go to the mall or, uh, or maybe, uh, maybe to, the, to the some uh, small shop and to touch and to see the product itself. Uh, Unless if they buy the, 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 uh, the, the food products, if they know the, the, the restaurant, if they know the, the shop, they would like to, to, to buy the, the food. This is the character of the Mexican people that I, I knew so far. Uh, well, uh, anyway, this is a good presentation to, from all of you. Uh, I would like to say that uh, Gojek was uh, willing to, to come to Mexico to see this opportunity because, as you know, Mexico, Mexico is a, one of the big population in, uh, in this area, in the Pacific Alliance. They have uh, more than 140 uh, million population. This is a good market for them, I mean, for Gojek to come and to visit uh, Mexico. Now they are still studying. They are going to see how the opportunity is. Well, this is the, my, 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 my speech, uh, some remarks for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak Dubes. I really appreciate it. Uh, Pak Dubes Prio, are you there? Would you like to say something, Pak Prio? Well, Pak Masni. Yes, Pak Dubes. You have the floor, Pak. Yeah, thanks very much for organizing uh, this uh, very uh, productive uh, uh, meeting, uh, conference. And I'd like uh, firstly to congratulate all the speakers uh, for their excellent presentation. It's very inspiring, actually. Uh, I'd like to observe and uh, to give information to our audience here that uh, between uh, Indonesia and uh, Pacific Alliance, or maybe uh, regional to regional cooperation, ASEAN and uh, uh, Pacific Alliance. So uh, let me underline that uh, with Colombia, with Colombia, we have, uh, let's say, the smallest number of uh, trade volume uh, bilaterally. And in this uh, case, uh, the uh, online shopping and uh, startups and unicorns uh, are in the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, growing uh, demand and uh, very prospective. So uh, I think this sector, if let's say Pukalapa and uh, Kocek and uh, other unicorns, Indonesia could develop its market into, let's say, uh, Colombia and other uh, countries in Pacific Islands. Uh, so they have a good uh, prospect. But the, the point is, again, is in the interaction between uh, the uh, private sector. So uh, among us in the uh, let's say of, uh, in the uh, governmental levels, we are doing our best to facilitate the, the private sectors to get interact uh, each other. Of course, I understand also that the uh, let's say the uh, uh, geographical distance and the lack of uh, 
uh, connectivity is our uh, imminent uh, challenge and uh, uh, we try to uh, get uh, closer by knowing each other better. So uh, uh, I'd like also to inform you yeah, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, starting tomorrow, uh, we'll, uh, uh, the, the, the two ministers, uh, the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of Indonesia and the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of Colombia are uh, scheduled to sign an agreement on visa free and I hope that it will uh, increase the flow of people from uh, Colombia and also from uh, other uh, countries of Pacific Alliance because uh, the rest uh, are already enjoying uh, the free visa to uh, the Indonesia. Uh, Pak Masni, uh, if you could like say uh, uh, make a follow-up uh, action afterwards because the prospects are very big, the potentials are big because uh, as uh, Ambassador of Chile in, uh, in Jakarta told us that the market are big because uh, the whole the whole continents of uh, the whole of uh, the four uh, countries of Pacific Alliance comprise of uh, uh, more than 260 million people, so it's big market. And I hope that our uh, our colleagues uh, of, of private sectors of Indonesia and also as well as uh, from uh, Pacific Alliance could uh, drum up uh, the cooperation and. Uh, I think uh, almost every country is bilaterally uh, facilitating or have a very uh, a solid uh, foundation uh, for uh, future solid cooperation in trade, uh, commerce, and, and, and investment. Uh, I could mention that the Indonesia with Chile has already, uh, 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 we, we call it a kind of SEPA, and also with uh, Peru, and uh, now our ongoing process with Colombia, so I think the prospect uh, are quite uh, uh, challenging, quite big, and it's very prospective. So thanks very much, pa, pa Masni. Uh, I hope that there will be another meeting as a follow-up uh, for uh, this conference. So thanks very much. Selamat pagi. Thank you very much, Pak pa Dubas. Uh, that was really uh, encouraging for us uh, to follow it up later. Uh, next, may I invite Ibu Marina Estela Anwar Bey. Uh, Madam Ambassador, you have the floor. Two to three minutes, yeah, Bu. Mohon maaf. Yeah. Uh, good morning, moderator. So thank you very much for giving me the time. I think uh, I would like to congratulate all the speakers. I think this is a very uh, good presentation for us, uh, especially for me, and then give the enlightenment about the online, uh, <coughs> digital online. And uh, I think in, in Peru, uh, during the COVID-19, there are a lot of uh, people here uh, like to do uh, business with online. I mean, to buy online uh, food or uh, consumer products. So I think like uh, Bukalapak is a very good uh, opportunity if they could have uh, relation, uh, I mean, they, they can offer the product to a uh, Peruvian uh, consumer, but uh, the problem is maybe uh, because um, very, uh, very far, and then at the moment, uh, Bukalapak may be only offer for um, countries uh, nearby. So maybe uh, it is very good if uh, there is opportunity to, uh, to have a connection with the Peruvian uh, consumer. I think uh, this is my uh, view. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, let me move to, let me invite also uh, the, the ambassadors of the Pacific Alliance member countries in Jakarta, uh, beside, of course, uh, Ambassador Gustavo Ayares. We have, uh, I have on my list, uh, of course, this is just uh, alphabetical order. May I invite uh, uh, Ambassador Armando Alvarez first, and then I, I will ask also my very good friend, Ambassador Julio Cardenas of Peru. Uh, Ambassador Alvarez, you have the floor first, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Well, first of all, my congratulations to, to the CAMLU for this uh, the organization of this important event. Also to the Indonesian people participating in, in the event, especially Bukalapak, which is a very, very worldwide renowned enterprise. To my dear friend, Happy Chepi Guartono in Mexico, 
Aldo Pacetti, <clears throat> and also uh, to my, my colleague Gustavo Ayares for his brilliant presentation on the digital economy of the Pacific Alliance. Uh, my, my proposal is following, following uh, with Parroti uh, proposed uh, of setting up a permanent hub for the uh, Indonesian and uh, the Pacific Alliance business people uh, uh, to engage in, in digital economy. And uh, perhaps why not organizing a second round of this kind of conference, a second round of this conference, specifically with business people of, of the two regions. Now we include business people from Indonesia, uh, especially Bukalapak and, and others. But the, the important thing is, uh, finally, the, the, the commerce is, is made by, by business people, not by not by not by bureaucrats. We are <laughs> we are just bureaucrats, and, and our, our task our task is setting the table for other people to do to do the business. So uh, my proposal is uh, having another another uh, round of this kind of, uh, of uh, event, this time with more time and inviting uh, people engaged in digital economy in uh, all four Latin American countries and, and Indonesia. That's yes. my, my proposal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Yes, of course, uh, what, that's what exactly we have in mind also. And we will surely follow it up with you, sir, and your team. And of course, all the, uh, the embassies of the uh, Pacific Alliance countries. Ambassador Cardenas, you have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, Pakerisa. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia and uh, all the excellent speakers for this comprehensive explanation. I just uh, want not to ask, uh, just to do um, a little comment. Um, in fact, I think uh, it's interesting to stress that um, what Ambassador uh, Nura said in the sense that uh, despite COVID-19, we have to be positive in fully exploring on ways to strengthen the economic cooperation between Pacific Alliance countries and Indonesia especially in the area of digital economy. It's really interesting to notice how the economic recovery of Indonesia is taking place thanks to the increasing of its digital economy sector and its e-commerce sector. The political will of our governments is there. So this is the time to find from practical ways to cooperate using the application of the technology. Indonesia and Pacific Alliance countries are members of APEC, and our leaders have given us the mandate of increasing our cooperation, specifically in digital economy. The recent virtual meeting of the APEC Ministry, Ministries of Trade and Commerce the last week has stated clear in its final declaration to adapt and cooperate in digital economy, to facilitate cross-border e-commerce among Asia-Pacific economies. So I think it's time now for us to implement this clear mandate. Thank you very much once again to the organizer of this excellent uh, webinar. I think as Ambassador uh, Armando said, uh, I think another round of this kind of uh, webinars could be very useful for, for all of us. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ambassador. Of course, uh, that is a promise. We will follow it up. Uh, I will team up also, of course, with the team of Pak Darianto Harsono and Ibu Zelda, the, the directors that, that are in charge of uh, our relation with uh, Pacific Alliance member countries. And we will see uh, let, uh, sooner than later, of course, we, we can have the second round uh, involving our business people and let them connect with each other and exploring the, the possibilities of, of expanding their businesses together. Of course, that's a, a very good uh, proposition, uh, excellencies. Uh, and now let me uh, move on uh, to the questions that we have received from our participants. There are quite a lot. Uh, and yes, of course, uh, there will not be enough time for the speakers to answer them all. I, we, uh, my colleagues have tried to cluster it. And let me ask first to Bapak Neil El Himam, uh, how and what are the requirements 
for creative economy actors to get training and digital economy from the government, especially from the ministry, Pak Neil. And how do you choose the new startups that can be assisted by, by, by your office? Uh, we received these questions with different formats of questions, with different choose of choice of words uh, from Ahmad Yusuf Akbar, from UEN Sharif Hidayatullah, and also from Rino Hudan and Austra Basuki. Uh, Pak Neil, Neil El-Himam, please, uh, Pak, uh, your response. Uh, thank you, Pak Director. Uh, first of all, uh, for, for the creative economy players uh, to be digitally into the new uh, new platform, digital platforms, uh, we have several programs, uh, but unfortunately, it's not going to be to cover the proof of concept and we call it the Baparaka Digital Partnership uh, 2.0 uh, is going uh, for three subsectors which uh, fashion, uh, culinary as well as uh, craft. Uh, uh, the, uh, the applicants, uh, I think there are, uh, this is basically uh, we are doing online incubation. So uh, we do we do everything online. It's about a month uh, worth of uh, by the experts as well as the uh, successful uh, entrepreneur, digital entrepreneurs, uh, to teach them uh, how to you know like how to transform digitally into the this, uh, digital platform. Uh, it's going. To, we output out of uh, close to 2000 applicants uh, we were we are going to take uh, around 300 uh, best of those uh, uh, players as well uh, to to be uh, to be transformed to to engage to participate in these programs mm -hmm. on the other hand uh, on the the other uh, questions about the, how we do we choose startups uh, I, 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 what we are doing right now is trying to uh, come up, uh, to trying to fit in the new technologies and uh, our needs. For example, right now we, we are we are huge. We are we are have we have big population and uh, uh, ge geographically we are archipelago. And one of the thing is telemedicine is going to be for 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 me. I see that telemedicine will become a huge helps uh, to our uh, health services in Indonesia to improve the quality. Uh, as well uh, the quality of the services for the health uh, 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 services in Indonesia. So that uh, we are trying to uh, uh, get together with the health tech dot uh, id, which is the, the association for the uh, health tech startups, uh, and to uh, f to find like uh, basically ask them uh, which kind of uh, help they need uh, in terms of uh, coming up developing their 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 solution for our uh, health uh, uh, services uh, needs so so and the other thing is probably agriculture uh, what we are uh, trying to do is th we are trying to find the the, the, the needs uh, i mean like to define the needs the problems and then give it to the uh, staff and try, uh, ask them to find solution for those those problems so, uh, and the one that uh, uh, basically come up with a good solution, then we, we try to provide them with support. All I right. think that's, uh, that's my yes. uh, director. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Pa. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that answered uh, what our participants have been asking. Uh, next to Ambassador IRS, uh, could you share with us a bit on how the small businesses in the Pacific Alliance member countries uh, cope with the impact of COVID-19? Uh, is it still business as usual? What kind of interventions do you think appropriate to mitigate the impact of uh, pandemic on the global uh, so, uh, supply chain? And also uh, uh, the next question for you, what do you think the concrete economic cooperation between Pacific Alliance and Indonesia during this pandemic situation in the context of economic recovery and digital economy. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, participants asking, posing almost the same question in, in their own uh, choice of words. Uh, please, Your Excellency, yes. your uh, No, I appreciate it so much, this question, because actually was the idea of um, my idea to um, comment one of my predecessor statements. First, 
uh, the impact of the crisis in, in uh, Pacific Alliance in particular in Latin America in general is, uh, is, is huge. Uh, there is no doubt that all governments uh, have been provided uh, a substantial aid, uh, financial aid for, the, um, for sustain the small and medium enterprises activities. Uh, we have, uh, we are convinced that uh, no matter if 2020 is, is, is a year that will be very difficult, our expectation is that 2021 will be, uh, we will grow in, in a substantial uh, percentage. Um, all the economies, in, in the case of Chile, we expect it to grow around 5%. Uh, we don't know yet the impact of the crisis. I would like to underline that it's still going on. So everything is still moving. So um, when we have the possibility that uh, the, the, the health emergency <coughs> is over or at least uh, diminished, we will see the real numbers. But until now have been very difficult. All the governments have been applying for uh, financial aid, uh, uh, like for example, um, <coughs> supporting the banking system that, uh, you know, for the loans that have these small and medium enterprises uh, given special subsidies, um, facilitation of uh, new contacts. In the case of Chile, this is in our case, we have been very active, you know, in making um, a business round of uh, consultation in Europe. Uh, we will have uh, at the end of this month in Asia, including Indonesia. We are preparing also with the Pacific Alliance countries a big event uh, by digital means. So uh, we are moving. Uh, Regarding to the second question, actually, um, I, have the pro I have a proposal. I fully agree with my colleague uh, Armando and, um, and Julio. Um, the Colombian ambassador is actually preparing this meeting for tonight with the ministry, so that's the reason that it's not present um, in, the, in the seminar. But we have been uh, talking that uh, for sure we need to a second uh, seminar like this. Uh, I think we must arrive to in a lack uh, if uh, the government is pretending to make it in November with concrete results. I would like to propose that maybe we can inquire uh, uh, some uh, new webinar with the participation of the some entrepreneurial sector in Chile. The other thing is uh, regarding uh, how uh, easy or how difficult it is to move uh, or to make some um, progress within, within Indonesia regarding the, uh, the perspective. I, I, I would like to say that, for example, in the case of Chile, we are the only Latin American country we have the CHEPA with Indonesia. But unfortunately, we have not been able to fully uh, apply. Unfortunately, the crisis uh, hit us in a, in a tremendous way. But uh, I think we need to, uh, you, Indonesia, because we already make that move, uh, we would like to see that all the ministers involved, mm. trade, agriculture, should have the same same coordination in the sense that if we are moving to boost digital uh, commerce or digital, uh, the, the whole concept, because it's a learning process, it's not easy because we need to split all the knowledge for all the people, but we would like to see from the uh, agriculture, especially regarding licenses, regarding in, in the case of uh, Minister of Trade, regarding quotas, we would like to see that they have an uh, open scope and, uh, and, and a view, open view, wide view that this is, uh, this is the time to move uh, in a different rhythm and a different perspective. Also, we would like to see the same attitude in the sense that why, uh, why not explore halal uh, concept, halal products. We have been engaged with the new agency and unfortunately I have been a certain delay. So sooner than later, we need to have all the certification, all the mutual recognition. For example, in the case of Chile, we are in a way to uh, sign this, the very first uh, MOU between the agency and the government of Chile regarding halal. But after that, we need, we need to uh, uh, agree some mutual recognition agreement. So will be not a good news if we continue to having, you know, this uh, border, uh, I mean, uh, closing border in Chile or Indonesia. So maybe we need to think that the, uh, the recognition of the activity, technical activity should be made by digital means. So 
we need to create different conditions. This, my proposal is that, please, as a, the Mexican ambassador said, we need to have a second round on this kind of way. I think it's excellent. We need to get full involvement of Kalim, for example. This is one of institutions that normally this way thing. And three, I think the, the, the whole concept that you are proposing us should be uh, widely known in, 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 uh, in other ministers because um, in, for these kind of things, uh, the, the, all the countries in Indonesia, uh, we need to deal with agriculture, with the, with the Ministry of Trade. So if you have one policy uh, open, one in order to uh, allow this free flow of uh, things between Indonesia and uh, Latin America, will be wonderful. And thirdly, one of the gaps that we need to fill is knowledge. We feel Latin American ambassador here, we discussed, we need to create conditions to uh, um, ex 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 express and expose all the possibilities in Latin America, because we have been um, moving forward to offer you, we have an integrated market. So one thing that you put in Chile is the same as you put in Colombia, Mexico, and, uh, and Peru. Because we have we don't have borders for for, for trade, we're in integrated economies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Of course, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, when I responded to Ambassador Alvarez's uh, intervention, uh, this surely uh, part of the building block. Uh, towards the, the second in Alak later. So for sure, we will team up uh, internally at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We will contact also related uh, institutions, ministries, and also Kadin and Apindo. And we will speak also with your team later. And let's see what we can do together. And we have to uh, create a space in which the businesses can meet and talk uh, with each other. And so then we will soon see, you know, the real business is uh, moving. Uh, both from Indonesia and also from the Pacific Island Alliance member countries. Uh, the next uh, question that <clears throat> we have received, questions actually, uh, for Ibu Kurnia, Sofia Roshada, and Bapak Rofi. Uh, two questions, uh, we hope that you can respond later. Uh, what is the chance for small businesses to compete with the much bigger ones in the e-commerce domain? And how e-commerce can support industry to do the cross-border trade, especially, of course, in this in the context of our discussion today between Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance member countries. Uh, maybe Ibu Ibu Kurnia Sofia first, and then Pa Rofi. You have the floor, Ibu Kurnia. Sure. So I think uh, for the uh, small and medium enterprises. Um, actually, the chance to uh, get some customers and, and grow the business from the e-commerce platforms are pretty big. Uh, the key here is actually uh, ability to understand what kind of a target market that you are trying to um, trying to onboard and uh, also have the uniqueness of the products. Uh, we have seen quite a lot of our merchants uh, that was just starting um, to sell online um, as kind of like a part-time and now they even have like more than 70 employees um, that are um, that are being put for uh, for growing their uh, online uh, businesses uh, presence through uh, e-commerce uh, actually. So the, the chances are pretty big. Uh, we have seen quite a lot of uh, example as well on uh, some of our merchants that um, that um, starting from uh, normal sellers until they uh, actually have their own uh, factories and even have their own brands of products. So uh, it's really about understanding uh, of who are your target market uh, and willingness as well to try um, and understanding how the uh, search engine works in marketplace and what kind of promotions, paid promotions that will work and, uh, and continuously communicating um, with your uh, customers uh, so that uh, so that they understand the, the value. So, so uh, in this case uh, again, um, as our vision is actually for uh, providing a fair economy for all. Uh, for small merchants, uh, we also have uh, some campaigns dedicated for them. So, for example, uh, in supporting the Bangga Buatan Indonesia or basically the local product campaign, we we have a dedicated. Um, campaign placement in our apps, as well as uh, utilizing some of the our uh, own media and paid channels uh, to promoting them. 
on the second point of how uh, to tap into um, a cross border. So I think a couple of a couple of um, activities that need to be done. Uh, first is to have your um, stores uh, listed, to have your product listed in, in, in the platforms, and then register for the Buka Global uh, in this case. Um, and also to find out uh, about the requirements in each of the country that become your target market, uh, because it's quite crucial to understand what are the requirements. So for example, if your product is on food, there will be some uh, license on food that, that needed to be uh, available or need to be uh, provided, right? But for um, perhaps like uh, other product category, uh, the requirements might be uh, different. So it, it first and foremost is to understand uh, which country that you are targeting, what are the license that they have, what's the customs uh, regulations as well. And uh, I think in, in this case, we, we, we can also explore for uh, potentially reaching out to the uh, diaspora in, in diaspora or some of the uh, customers in in the target countries hope that thank answer you. okay Th thank you Bukornia. Pak Rofi uh, you have the floor Pak. yeah uh, thank you Pak. Uh, uh, I think as a uh, small medium enterprises uh, the key is uh, about the digital marketing if if the SMEs can uh, actually learn and, and and implement the digital marketing uh, knowledge uh, I think that's the key for for to to tackle the the, the, the the online commerce so I think if you have quality product okay that's I think the the first uh, necessity and then you learn about the digital marketing I think you will have the equal opportunity as the the big brands because I think uh, it is important to learn about the digital marketing how to target the audience how to use the ads and so on and so forth once you got that, I think you have an equal opportunity and I think you will have the same uh, path like the other brands because brands is not easily uh, getting the cons consumer as well in the uh, because the, the online consumers is quite critical. They are, are actually putting uh, attention to the reviews and once uh, once that's been uh, uh, tackled, I think it's very easy. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say easy, but I think it's quite simple. Uh, the second uh, question is about the cross-border e-commerce. I was saying I have say, I have mentioned on my presentation that the, there's a, some kind of requirements towards the cross-border e-commerce. The first is you have to tackle the logistical challenge, how to uh, reduce the shipping costs. Uh, that's the, the, the first requirement. So I think we need to have a, some kind of partnership, uh, for example, with the uh, Pacific Alliance's logistic company, uh, how to create uh, the, 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 the partnership uh, warehouses, you know, to stock our products to, from Indonesia to Pacific Alliance member, member countries. And as, uh, as well as the product database, I think that's quite important because, you know, uh, we, need to, uh, 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 we need to do the mapping, how to, uh, how to tackle the, the, the market, the new market with our own product. Because if it's our product is not actually wanted by the, the, the targeted uh, market, I think it's, it doesn't work. It, it will not work. I think that's all, Pak. And thank you yeah. very much, Pak Rofi. Uh, and I, I, I think I would like to, uh, I would like to leave first because I need to be the, to the, the next meeting with the, with the maritime and investment uh, um, uh, ministry. Uh, thank please, you, please, Pak. Pa. Thank you, very much. Okay. thank you very much. Uh, and actually, we, we we are ready to help the Minister of Foreign Affairs to help the next step. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished speakers, uh, dear participants. Uh, that was the end of our discussion. Uh, my apologies uh, if I uh, address, uh, not uh, properly address your name or position. Uh, and also, unfortunately, we do not have enough time to address each and every questions that our uh, uh, distinguished participants have posed uh, for our speakers. Unfortunately, we have only very limited time. So that was our discussion. Uh, of course, as uh, some uh, ambassadors and speakers uh, suggested, we will surely have the follow-up of this discussion. We will not uh, just let it stay as talks. We need to have actions. We need to have an, the next meeting that will involve the business communities 
and make sure that they can meet even at least for now virtually so they can have uh, you know have their own discussions and talk about what they can do uh, to uh, the economic cooperation especially in the digital economy between Indonesia and the Pacific Alliance Mother countries also of course uh, other countries in Latin America I, I also see the presence of ambassador of Argentina uh, among the among our participants uh, welcome your excellency um, yeah but, but that's it uh, basically uh, if I will not pretend I will be able to summarize the very rich discussion that we had. Unfortunately, uh, 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 because the, the, the very short time we have, but uh, I took, I tried to make uh, one or two points uh, that the, uh, from the discussions. First, of course, we uh, highlighted the on, that online sales have recently experienced a surge uh, in demand through the COVID-19 pandemic. And also, highlight, uh, it, the, the pandemic also highlighted the need to bridge the digital divide, both within and across countries. And given the central role of the digital economy uh, has played during the the, uh, the pandemic, especially especially for the small and medium enterprises, we also uh, more or less uh, in agreement that we again uh, has uh, have been pointing out several times to have the follow-up meetings uh, to have uh, uh, to help the, 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 the businesses to use the platform of e-commerce to alleviate uh, some of the challenges faced by the SMEs in uh, combating the impact of the pandemic uh, on both sides, uh, both in Indonesia and also the Pacific Alliance member countries and many other countries. Uh, excellencies, uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our uh, discussion. To conclude, I sincerely hope that uh, uh, this short, well, very short, actually, this short webinar uh, could provide a mutual understanding of our respective digital economy condition so that we can fully explore uh, the ideas on how to strengthen our economic cooperation and further support our SMEs in the, midst, in the midst, and of course, right after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Once again, on behalf of the Director General of American and European Affairs, Minister of Foreign Affairs, I thank you. I thank all the honorable speakers and distinguished participants, excellencies for making time in your busy schedule to join, to join our webinar this morning. In evening, of course, uh, for our uh, dear ambassadors in, in, in the Pacific Alliance member countries. Uh, again, my apologies, Bapak Dubes, Ibu Dubes, for making you stay up very late. But I believe that the discussion that we have, uh, no matter short, uh, would be beneficial and will help us in coordinate later on how to assist the businesses from Indonesia and also from the Pacific Alliance member countries to connect to each other and uh, expand their businesses. With the time and the talent constraint, uh, thank you for being with us today, for bearing with us today. It has been our pleasure to host uh, this event and I wish, you, uh, I wish you all a pleasant day and evening. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Excellencies, Ambassadors. Pak Dirjen, terima kasih banyak, Pak Dirjen. Bapak Ibu. Pak Masni. Yes, Pak Terima kasih, Pak Dubes. Terima kasih. Pak Dubes Stella. Ya, terima kasih. Pak Dubes Cepi. Terima kasih, Pak Dubes Priyo, Bu Estella. Ya, terima kasih, Pak Dirjen. Pak Dirjen. Pak Dirjen, selamat pagi. Ya. Selamat pagi, Pak Dirjen. Selamat pagi, Pak Dirjen. Selamat pagi, Pak Dirjen. Selamat pagi, Pak Dirjen. Selamat pagi, Pak Dirj